So throughout this unit, we've talked a lot about the um, components of air pollution, uh, the things that make up AQI, uh, what their sources are, what their health effects are, and so on. Uh, what I want to do with this uh, particular presentation is to talk about how we can reduce these pollutants in the atmosphere from a technological standpoint. There's ways of reducing them from a <clears throat> from a uh, consumer choice uh, carbon footprint perspective, and we'll talk about that later in the year. But for today, I just want to talk about technologies that exist for how to reduce air pollution. So basically, this is these are the the main ways we have the the, the, the tools in our arsenal to reduce air pollution. Uh, the first and most important one is scrubbers in the smokestacks of uh, factories and power plants. The second is catalytic converters in the exhaust streams of cars. Then there's electric vehicles, mostly electric cars. And then there's uh, non-fossil fuel energy sources, which is such an important topic. Uh, and so it's so vital to human survival that it's, it's going to be its own unit of study later in the year. Uh, so most of we'll look at the first few things here. So consider the fact that over 50% of the pollution that's in our air today here in, in at KIS, 50% of it at least is coming to us courtesy of uh, power production at factories and electrical generation facilities. Now that's good news because that means uh, half the pollution that, that we're encountering has passed through a known point where we have some ability to try to mitigate. And so one of the best ways to mitigate this is to use what's known as a scrubber. So a scrubber is a device that can that, that basically the exhaust gases from power generation, basically uh, burning coal, oil, fossil fuels, that exhaust gas carries with it SO2 and NOx and, other, and particulate matter. And so is how do we how do we subtract out those 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 components? from this exhaust stream. We can't take everything out, but we can't take out the, the particulates, the, the PM10, PM2.5, the SO2, the NOx, we can take that out. All right, now the positives are, you take out the SO2, you take out the NOx, you take out the PMs, well, what happens? Well, first of all, air quality improves. There's less acid rain. Uh, ozone isn't forming if there isn't any NOx. Uh, so these are some pretty serious positives. Now the negatives are, it's not cheap. Now, the, the good news is the technology is already in existence. Uh, we don't have to wait for it to happen. We don't have to hope that we can invest in it and make it. It's already here. It's getting better as time goes on, but we have scrubber technology in place now. Uh, but it, it adds to the cost of, of generating electricity. It adds to the cost of manufacturing products. So that means that the consumer is going to, have to pay more for those things. Uh, how much more? maybe say up to 10% more. But if you think about it, all right, I just looked it up yesterday. I think I read 18,000 people die every year in Korea is estimated by World Health Organization as a result of respiratory complications from uh, air pollution. 18,000 lives is a lot. And if you, look, if you look at the world, we're talking millions of lives. We can save millions of lives with this technology. Paying 10% more for your electricity, paying 10% more for the products that you buy, Yes, that has an economic impact, but it is so worth it, in my opinion. The other negative we have is this. <clears throat> uh, when you capture these compounds, these sulfurs and these particulates uh, uh, and this nitrogen, where are you going to put it? So you had to figure out how to, how to process the waste and store the waste, and that is problematic. Now, there are three different types of uh scrubbing technology I want to look at. The first one is called wet scrubbers. This is the most effective method because a wet scrubber can take out up to 98% of, of the pollutants, uh, which is amazing. So basically what's coming out is pollution-free. Now it's still going to have carbon dioxide. Again, when we talk about global warming, that's a separate thing. We can't take that out, uh, not this way. But we can take out the sulfur dioxides, the nitrogen oxides, and the particulate matter. And here's how we do it. The gas that comes in here has these components to it. A lot of times we'll call it acid gas because it, it has the components of acid rain in it, SO2, NOx, and particulate matter. Now, as it goes up, it's going against a spray of, of fine droplets of mist, and this mist contains water that is mixed with compounds that increase its pH, so make its pH higher than 7, so it's basic. So we're talking about things like um, uh, sodium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, 
sodium carbonate, slaked lime. Uh, we, we, we have a mixture with the, this in it, and we're spraying that mist into here. And so as the, these droplets containing these compounds mix with the sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides, they neutralize them, take them out of the air, and they end up, those, those pollutants end up here in this water at the bottom, what we call the scrubbing solution, which then has to be taken out and processed. And that adds another expense to it. Uh, so this, the, the drawback to wet scrubbers is they're expensive, uh, both to, to, to operate and to process the waste. The good news is they get out 98% of the pollutants, which is huge. I mean, like imagine imagine Korea with, with glorious blue skies every day, kind of like what we've been enjoying lately. Well, that's what scrubbers do for you. Dry scrubbers uh, are less expensive, but they're also less efficient. Uh, but a lot of companies choose them be, because of, of their – oops, I'm getting things here on – Okay, never mind. That's Google Hangouts talking about the upcoming advisory. But anyway, <laughs> burning coal, oil, natural gas. So the, the, the exhaust gas, we'll call it acid gas, comes in here. The first thing we do here is we have to cool it down in order to use the dry scrubber. So we have a heat exchanger that's going to cost a little bit of money, but we've got to cool it down. Now, then what happens is it moves into here, and we blow in uh, powders that are going to react with it. So alkali, that basically means things that are basic. So we're going to blow in these particles. These particles are going to react with the SO2 and the NOxs uh, in a dry form, though. And so that's, that solid residue is just going to come down here. It's just a lot easier to work with solid residue than it is with liquid residue. That's one of the benefits of this. But we had to have a filter in place. We had to filter because otherwise a lot of this powder is just going to go right up. So, so in order to get it through, we have to have a fan to kind of force the air through because otherwise it'll get caught up in that filter but this technology it, it is it is not as efficient as as wet scrubbers but it is very efficient and it's less expensive uh both to operate and to um, process the waste then we have electrostatic scrubbers electrostatic scrubbers are what you have in your home air purifiers so the idea here is here's the waste stream of smoke particles that has you know, sulfur dioxides and PMs and nitrogen oxides. And we're going to have all that pass through a metal mesh that has a very strong negative charge. And so these, each of these particles is going to pick up electrons and become negatively charged as they pass through this. And then as they move up the smokestack, we now have positively charged metal plates, which they will then be attracted to because they have the opposite electrical charge. So they'll come over here, and when they when they reach here, they will neutralize. They'll the negative charge will get rid of its electron, become neutral, and then it will just drop down here onto this what's called a hopper, and then we can just pull this out. So these are also very effective. They they are not as efficient as wet scrubbers or dry scrubbers, but they they work quite well. Uh, and um, yeah, I just want you to know how they work. I'm not really sure how they rate as far as their actual cost, to be honest. Now let's talk about cars. Sorry, hearing all the things going off being huh, for the other teachers worrying about what they're going to do during advisory. Catalytic converters are things we put on cars. Now a catalyst is a substance that uh, it causes chemical reactions to occur without uh, participating in the reaction. It's not a reactant. It's just the reaction occurs when that catalyst is present. Now in a catalytic converter, we have this ceramic honeycomb that has embedded in it uh, platinum compounds. And so what happens is in car exhaust, we hit, car exhaust is the main source of NOx that causes uh, – it's an acid rain component and it also causes ozone and, and, and the brown smog we see. So this is a real problem. Uh, there's also carbon monoxide. The main source of carbon monoxide is, is, is uh, uh, from cars because it's very difficult, especially in a, in a vehicle – a personal vehicle to maintain the proper fuel air mix so we get partial combustion which leads to, to co so what happens then is as this passes through here uh then reactions occur because of this catalyst so as these things come in as nox hc and co they come out as h2o co2 and n2 this is totally harmless this is totally harmless we're going to see this is a real problem, but at least it's not a, 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 a pollutant in the sense of it doesn't cause uh, problems to us in terms of, of respiration. It causes global warming, and that's a separate issue, but but that's how a catalytic converter works. It takes two things, CO and, and NOx, two things that are in our AQI index, and it takes them out of the exhaust stream of a car. Uh, and I know in America, you have to have these. I don't know about Korea and other countries in Asia, but uh, they certainly work quite well. Now, 
they don't work with diesel. And so diesel vehicles are big polluters because they, they tend to put a lot of sulfur dioxide in the air as well as NOx. Then we have electric vehicles uh, like a Tesla. I mean, everybody loves Tesla. They're so cool, right? Well, uh, these, these electric vehicles, keep my eye on the time here, Sam's okay, great. These electric vehicles, there's a couple nice things about it. First of all, there's zero emissions from the vehicle itself. So an electric vehicle, nothing comes out of it, so it can't cause air pollution. Uh, so that's a definite positive. Another one is they use less energy overall. And, and we're, as we go through this, this course, uh, we're going to see that really what we need to be doing as a society is figuring out how to use less energy and how to find better sources of energy. Uh, and so by using less, we really help out. Okay. And so that's where electric cars are great because they're far, far, far more energy efficient than a car that's getting really hot. Uh, and when you put your foot on the brake in this car, you're just recharging the battery for the most part. So, uh, it's a really great technology and it's becoming less expensive over time. Uh, but still I put it as a negative. They're still fairly expensive, but they've, they've gotten much, much less expensive. They have a limited range per charge. Now, how far can you drive? Uh, I think in Korea, you probably get away with it. In other places, probably not as much. Like in a place like the United States, where you have large distances, it's still less so. But you know what? Uh, people like Elon Musk are pushing this technology, and they're making it. Uh, they're 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 scaling it up and making it less expensive, and they're solving a lot of these problems. So I think in in the coming years, we're going to see the expense come down and the range increase as battery technology improves. Um, but let's be real, energy has to come from somewhere. And if I'm going to plug this car in, that means the power company has to generate more electricity. So it's not like free energy. It's the energy has got to come from somewhere. So that means, as things stand right now, we have to burn more coal in order to, uh, to produce the electricity needed to charge the car. And now the last thing we'll talk about is uh, energy sources. So ideally, what we need to do is burn less fossil fuel because Pretty much all of the pollutants we talk about are a consequence of burning fossil fuels. Fossil fuels, bad, okay? But we're, we're, we're addicted to them right now. That, that's, that's all we use for the most part. Now, there are alternatives. Now, nuclear power, a lot of people seem to have a, a bad idea about nuclear power, but I will say nuclear power is something, the technology is here. It, 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 it can be scaled up to provide all of our energy needs. Uh, and so, so we should be considering. And, and the only thing that comes out of these is is steam. There's no there's no pollutants made by a nuclear power plant other than warm water. So, so the idea is if we could move to to nuclear or wind or solar. Now, let's just okay. Here's some things with, with wind. Wind energy is something we're waiting to happen. It's got plenty of its own negatives. We'll talk about later in the year. But basically, as things stand right now, it just can't generate nearly as much electricity as what we need in our society. And the same is true for solar. You can blanket our country with solar panels. It still doesn't provide us enough energy uh, that these, these te technologies are improving. But as it stands right now, they can't come close. No, no, nowhere near enough uh, of, of power to fuel our society. Nuclear power could do it. So, uh, and again, this is going to be a whole unit of study. But basically, we can both stop uh causing problems with AQI if we switch away from, from fossil fuel. We'll also reduce CO2 because CO2 is something that these scrubber technologies and catalytic converters, they don't take that out of the waste stream. So, so there's still a problem with carbon dioxide, which causes global warming. Uh, and another positive about fossil uh, about non-fossil fuel is is a lot of them are are renewable like like wind and electricity are renewable, meaning you can never run out of them. Nuclear you can run out of, okay? Fossil fuels you can definitely run out of. So, so that's one of the benefits of those. The negatives are, well, they're more expensive than fossil fuel. That's why we're not using them. Economically, uh, it just doesn't, it doesn't work out. People want to save money, so they burn coal. We could, we could provide all of our electricity with nuclear, but it just costs a lot more. People don't want to spend the money. And the other thing is only nuclear right now can meet our power demands. Uh, the other forms of renewable energies that are not fossil fuel based are just simply uh, not even close to being able to supply our energy needs. Okay. So there you go. Uh, that's it for how we reduce uh, our uh, air pollution using technology.